Number 10, focusing on my mental health. Mental health was never anything I really paid a lot of attention to, and I always thought that people that had mental health problems were different people than me. And over time, you start to realize the impact that mental health has. I know there were a lot of times, for example, when I was trying to meet deadlines or when I was trying to get things done or when I was dealing with my ambitions, that I would become anxious because of what was happening going forward. And the fact is, is I couldn't control anything that was going to happen going forward. So that anxiety was really self-inflicted. And so there were other times that I ruminated about things that happened in the past. And I was incredibly frustrated about things that happened in the past. And the reality was in that instance as well, I was not able to focus on the past. But I realized that had I gone down either of these too deeply and too aggressively, I could have ended up and may still end up if I don't focus on it, with serious mental health challenges going forward. And one of the biggest challenges that retirees have as they get deeper in retirement are mental health challenges. Number nine, expressing myself. I never was really a person that told people how I felt. I felt things, I bottled it up inside, and especially as men, we're taught that expressing our emotions is a sign of weakness. And you start to realize as you mature that it's actually a sign of strength because confident people have no problem expressing themselves because nothing else is at risk to them being who they are. And it took me a long time to, to figure that out. And so now what I do is I really make it a point to try to express myself. And I use a bunch of different vehicles to express myself. I have conversations with my friends that I didn't have before. There were times that I got into disagreements with people and I would just walk away and I started to realize how dysfunctional that actually was. And so now I work through the conversations. This YouTube channel, it gives me an opportunity to help each of you understand my perspective and so far as what to expect when you start looking at retirement or some of the mechanisms to get to retirement. But what it also does is it helps me process some of my own journey and understand and come to terms with things that I did and understand that things that may not have necessarily felt good at the time actually have a constructive end. So I think it's really important and I'm going to continue to focus on expressing myself. Number eight, being creative. My best friend told me a few months ago that, Sabado, you're a creative. And I didn't really know what that meant. I thought I was a logical guy that found logical solutions to everyday issues and didn't have time for any of that creative stuff, any of that artsy fartsy stuff. But being creative isn't all about being artsy fartsy because as he pointed out, he said, Sabado, you used to write poetry. Sabado, you, you're playing the piano. Sabado, you're doing a YouTube channel. Sabado, you used to DJ. So all of these things are creative things. Now, not everybody is gonna be some famous artist, but what I've found is that my creative outlets give me an opportunity to express things that maybe I can't talk about. Similar to what Stevie Wonder said in Sir Duke, that music is a world in itself with the language people all understand. And I used to use music and still do to some degree, use music to help me process emotions that I can't express. And so one of the things that I'm really focusing on is as opposed to pushing away my creative side, I'm really starting to embrace it. Number seven, focusing on experiences. I used to focus on everything but the experience. I used to focus on trying to get it done. I used to focus on where it was that I was going, how I was going to do it, the time, the structure, the organization behind things. And what happens is I would find myself in situations where I would lose the beauty of the situation because I was so focused on getting it done, getting it done right, and focusing on all the details. And so I resign myself now to the fact, or not necessarily resign myself, but I've committed to myself that I'm going to focus on the experience. It's not about necessarily doing something on time. It's just the fact that I'm doing something because some of the best stories that I have to tell are stories when things don't go right. Um, I, my best friend and I have a conversation about a time when we took the, uh, uh, the Caltrain bus all the way from San Jose to San Francisco to a Tribe Called Quest concert thinking we were going to be cool enough to get a ride home. And it turns out we didn't know anybody at the concert. And then we had to stay in San Francisco overnight and almost slept on a park bench. And so now here we are 30 years removed from that. That was a great experience. It was a great story. And it wasn't based on something going absolutely right. And so now, as opposed to focus on, focusing on the organization and the structure of everything, I'm really just going to focus on the experiences. So then I continue to have the stories to tell and the experiences to share uh, with others.
Number six, putting myself first. I lived a life where everything I did was for everybody else. When you have a mission statement that is to uplift the human condition in any way that you can, you're constantly focused on what can I do for other people? How can I help other people accomplish their goals? How can I help get one person to feel the way they want to feel or whatever it is? And sometimes when you do that, you start to go down the path of you're taking care of everybody else, but you're not taking care of yourself. And as I would tell other people that if you don't take care of yourself, then you're not any good to anybody. Well, the same thing goes inside. And sometimes you realize that if you're the person that's always giving the care and you're always taking care of everybody, then everybody else tends to think you have it all sewed up. And so I, I use a statement that I heard a long time ago that the lion's job is to take care of the pride, but who supports the lion? And so now I've realized that it's really important that I take care of myself because everybody else is taking care of themselves. And so it becomes a pull and I don't end up getting what I need sometimes because I'm taking care of everybody else. So I told myself in retirement that my key is going to, one of my keys is going to be to take care of myself. Number five, I've started teaching myself new things. I think I'm an individual that knows a lot of stuff. I've had the opportunity to experience a lot. I've had an experience, had the opportunity to experience a, a whole host of different things. I've done a lot of traveling. I've been to almost every state in the country. I've talked to people of all walks of life, but there's still a lot of things that I don't know. And so what I want to do and what I'm, what I've committed to is I've committed to lifelong learning and it's not all going and sitting in a class and it's not all doing a bunch of wild things to try to learn something, but trying to understand how can I become a better friend? How can I become a better gardener? I've taught myself how to play the piano. How do I do, how do I maybe do things better than I'm doing now? I look at my YouTube channel and if you look at the videos that from where I started to the videos today, they're night and day. Not because I hired an editor and had somebody come in, but because through teaching myself the technologies of putting together a YouTube channel and some of the basics of filmmaking, I now have a channel that over 500 people look forward to seeing videos from. So I think that one of the keys for all of us is to continue to teach ourselves things. And one of the ways to combat late stage uh, uh, issues is to continue to keep your mind busy. And so it keeps my mind focused, keeps me engaged, keeps my perspective relevant. And overall, I just feel good about myself the same way I feel good about myself when I exercise. Number four, I started eating better. I went to the doctor recently and, I, and the doctor told me that all of my levels had gone up. And when I say they had gone up, they had gone out of range. So some levels were lower, some levels were higher. And so what I told myself I was gonna do was instead of trying to get on a bunch of medication and manage the symptoms, I'm just gonna start eating better. And so I started eating better, I eat more salads, I eat more lean proteins, I generally for lunch will have nuts and raisins, and every now and then I have a peanut butter sandwich, but I've cut down the dietary sugars, and folks, I feel great. I'm 52 years old, and I feel better now than I did when I was 42, hands down, physically, because I've what, I'm, what I've started to do is instead of looking at food as something to comfort me, which I think a lot of us do, I'm using food as fuel to help my body recover from the things that I do. When I go golfing and I golf, walk six miles, my body is aching because six miles is a long time in the sun pushing a golf cart and swinging a club. And so I want to give myself food and nutrients that are going to nourish that and help my body heal. And I'll tell you that once I made that commitment, I was 100% better, and it's just, it's night and day. Number three, giving back. I've always been a person of service, and I've always tried to find ways to give back to the community. So when I was in elementary school, I would do blood drives and things like that. Or not elementary school, but middle school and high school. I talked to kids about not drinking and doing drugs. I worked in elementary school early on in my career to help kids with attention deficit disorder. I talk about that in another video, so I suggest you go and you take a look at it. Um, and I've worked now as an adult on my homeowners association, and my goal in the homeowners association 
is really to bring common sense decision making to some of the key pieces of the homeowners association because a lot of times we get those letters that something is not right or we make a change and something's not right and then there's a bunch of angst and so my way of giving back is trying to help make sure that the decisions that are made are made in a common sense way that are understandable does it mean that everybody's going to agree no and now that i'm retired I'm really focused on the Master Gardener program. And part of the reason that I'm interested, I'm so interested in the Master Gardener program is because the Master Gardener program not only teaches you how to garden, but also has a requirement that you go out into the community for at least 50 hours a year and you teach people how to garden. And you're using tried and true research developed uh, methodologies to help people garden. So not everybody's going to be able to go to Home Depot and buy the best soil and by the best elements for the soil. And so there are things that you can do organically to get people there. And so there's, and there's parts of cities, at least in the city that I live in, that have deserts where they have what they, what they call food deserts. So you have a bunch of convenience stores, you have a bunch of liquor stores, but you don't have grocery stores selling fresh fruits and vegetables. And so what that creates is that creates a community that's relying largely on processed foods. And processed foods aren't really to nourish you, they're just to fill you up. And so if you eat enough processed food, you end up with higher instances of heart disease and higher instances of stroke, higher cholesterol, bad health outcomes. In fact, if you look at the, um, the social determinants of health, one of the social determinants of health stems from access to fresh fruits and vegetables. And so what my goal is, is for those people that are interested to be able to teach them how to build their, or not build, but how to grow their own food. So they can grow tomatoes, they can grow peppers, they can grow their own fresh fruits and vegetables. And hopefully that'll help them become more healthy, help them help their children become more healthy, and then bring health to that community. And so it's a way to give back. Another thing that we do, and I think I've mentioned this in another video, is we have food pantries all around town. And anybody that grows vegetables, particularly something like tomatoes or cucumbers, where they just grow in abundance, Instead of throwing the extra vegetables away, I have an order of operations. First, they go to my neighbors because my neighbors have to hear me talk about gardening all the time, so they go to my neighbors. But second, we take them to the food pantry because there are people, again, that don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. They eat a lot of processed food. They eat a lot of what's given to them, and unfortunately, a lot of that's not fresh fruits and vegetables. And so part of my responsibility, at least the responsibility that I gave myself, was to help people in that situation by giving them fresh fruits and vegetables. So it's not going to help everybody, and I don't think we can ever help everybody, but it's just a matter of doing what we can to help make the world a better place, to help uplift this human condition. Number two, being selfish, filling my cup, doing things that I want to do. It's easy to get caught into the obligations of other people. In fact, I was in a grocery store not long ago, and an individual I know talked to me about something that he's working on and told me that, well, you know, now that you're retired, Sabado, I could go ahead and ask you to do this because you have the time. And so the question isn't whether or not I have the time to do things. The question is, do I want to do it? And there was a long time where I would do things because of obligation or I felt obligated to do it but out of obligation to others that really were frustrating to me. And what I found happened to me was I would get into these situations knowing that I didn't want to be in that situation. Then I would get frustrated and lash out at the people around me in a passive aggressive way because I was angry that I was there. And at this stage of my life, I don't have time to be angry. I have nothing to really be angry about. And so guess what? I'm not going to allow myself be ang to be angry. So being selfish doesn't mean I'm not going to be caring, doesn't mean I'm not going to be compassionate, doesn't mean I'm not going to do for others. But what it does mean is that I'm not going to spend time uh, filling up everybody else's cup and not filling up my own. And so I'm really going to focus, I really am now going to be focusing on those things that help me feel good about what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, being in places that I want to be. Because when I walk in the room, if you get the best me, then we're all better off and get a better outcome from whatever I walked into that room from, and vice versa. So I, I would suggest all of us take an inventory of the things that you do and the things that you don't, do, don't want to do and figure out how can I set myself up in such a way that I don't find myself doing the things that I don't want to do and not end up frustrated longer term. Number one, I started exercising regularly. 
exercise for me is a love-hate relationship because for many of you, you may not know that I used to play basketball in college and then I blew out my knee. Then I played basketball as an adult and I blew out my Achilles tendon. And so exercise to me always seemed to create injuries. And so I just would exercise sometimes, not exercise other times. And when I was working, work was the perfect excuse for me not to exercise regularly because I always had a project to do. I was always busy. I was always tired. But what I started to realize is that when you start looking at people at advanced age, their ability to overcome illness or to overcome injury a lot of times is based on their own physical fitness. So I'll give you an example. When I was a kid, my mother used to do aerobics. She used to, she was of the Jane Fonda de generation. So she had the stair stepper in the room. She had the videotapes and she'd put in the videotapes and she would do aerobics all the time. Now she's 80 years old. She had a knee replacement a couple years ago and knee replacements are touch and go for people of advanced age. Do you know, well, you probably don't because I never told you this, but that she got it, had her knee replaced and a year later was out walking three miles. Not because she's some super person, a super being, but because she was in good physical fitness. And had she not been doing the exercise that she was doing earlier, then she may not be uh, in the position that she is to go out and walk three to five miles every single day. So that just told me that Exercise is critically important. It's responsible for better health outcomes and really helps you stay healthy down the road. So one of the things that I started to do and I committed to myself is I started doing regular exercise. One of the things that I do is I, I have an app on my phone that gives me Pilates and yoga and strength exercises. So I do that and I use those exercises. Um, I, I walk uh, golf courses, and that's about six miles, and I try to do that. This week, I, I played twice, so I, uh, I did two rounds of golf, so that's 12 miles of walking. There's a bunch of energy that I was able to use and get moving, but at the end of the day, my goal is just to continue to move because at six foot eight, it's easy to get up to a 300, 350 pounds, and at that point, there's not a lot that can help me, and, and the goal that I have for myself is not to, tr is not to have surgery and is not to take any medications. And so right now, I do not take any medications. I take a couple of vitamins. I take one a day for 50 plus men. And I also take a vitamin C and an allergy tablet. So I just want to be fully transparent. But I have no prescriptions for any uh, chronic diseases. And my goal is, is not to take any medications for chronic diseases. So those are the 10. So just to recap on the 10. Number 10, focusing on my mental health. Number nine, expressing myself more than I've expressed myself in the past. Number eight, being creative um, and just expressing myself and using those outlets to be creative. Number seven, focusing on experiences as opposed to organization. Uh, number six, putting myself first and really looking at myself and saying, look, these are the things that I want to do and I'm not going to sacri sacrifice myself for other people. Uh, number five, teaching myself new things. Always be learning. Number four, eating better. I've been eating better because I'm fueling my body and preparing my body for the long haul of this thing that we call life. Number three, uh, give it back to the community. There is, you cannot put a premium on serving your community. We all have an, at the end of the day, we all live in the same community and we all have a responsibility to take care of each other in any way that we can. And my personal mission statement is to uplift the human condition in any way that I can. And the ways that I do it, I hope it's working. Being selfish and, and filling up my cup. I, I really am not putting myself in situations I don't wanna be in. Are there situations where I'd rather do something else? Sure. It's never 100%, but right now, if you think about your time, you're spending most of your days going into work, coming home for a couple of hours and sleeping. And so you really, on a, any given day, only get about two or three hours with your family. And so is that how you want to spend your life? And if it is, great. But if you have an opportunity to do something different, then don't waste your time doing things you don't want to do when you just have a limited amount of time to spend time with your family. Do the things that are necessary for you to do what it is that you want to do. And sometimes, as I used to say, Sometimes people just have to be angry and you have to be okay with that. Um, and the last one, number one, is exercising regularly because if you don't have your health, you really don't have anything else. 
And the number one risk, I think, in retirement is health. I think the number one risk in life is health because if your health goes down, then nothing else matters. Doesn't matter how much money you have. Doesn't matter who you're connected to and the things that you do and the experiences that you have access to. None of that matters if you don't have your health. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out here, but I would ask that for any of you that find this channel helpful or useful in any way, feel free to subscribe, but more importantly, share this with your friends. I think that if I have, if you're watching this video, this stuff certainly may resonate with you. And if it resonates with you, it probably resonates with the people that you know, because the idea here isn't trying to sell people on the idea of retirement, because I recognize that retirement isn't necessarily in the cards for everybody. But what is in the cards is you living your best life. And so my expectation is that you live your best life. And any of these things that we talk about, these are things that can help you today. I just happen to be retired and want to share these things with you based on my experience because I think they may help you get to where it is that you want to be. But the goal is to get to a place where you're living your best life. And don't you want everybody else in your world to live the best life that they can and have the best access to information? And if you have any questions, please leave any questions that you have down in the comments. I answer every comment. And if you have a specific question, I'll try to put together some content around it and ask it. Because if you have it, then I'm sure a hundred other people have that same question. And the goal here is just to get to as many people as we can just to help as many people live their best lives so they feel better about the world. Because I think we're in a world right now where people are focused on what's different about each other. And I think we can all benefit from coming together on some core principles. And one of those is living your best life. Because if you live your best life, then you have fewer things to be angry about. And then it's easier to be more compassionate and loving towards your other fellow human beings. So on that note, have a good rest of your day. And I will talk to you soon.